Hey guys, so today I'm going to be taking a look at the latest Linux Mint release, Linux Mint 17.1 Cinnamon Edition. Now, this is a particularly interesting release when it comes to Linux Mint uh, releases because it's the first on its new kind of schedule. Uh, whereas what Linux Mint used to do is they used to take the latest version of Ubuntu and then build on top of that and then have a release every six months, sort of parallel to Ubuntu's release cycle as well. Now what Linux Mint are doing this time around is they're taking the latest long-term support release of Ubuntu, uh, which is 14.04, and then they're building on top of that, they're still releasing Linux Mint every six months, but um, it's still going to be based off the long-term support release of Ubuntu, which is well pretty good actually it's a move that i personally was in favor of i like the idea that linux mint put stability very high on their list of priorities whereas ubuntu is a distribution that might prefer maybe trying out something a little more innovative like a new desktop uh, or user interface or perhaps um a different software selection line or lineup depending or sometimes regardless of of what public opinion tends to favor and i think that linux mint gives you that feeling that it does actually listen very quite um, quite strongly to the, the feedback that's given to it and it does feel like a more community based distribution and in no small part because it quite clearly does listen to some of the choices that the community make. It's more reserved, maybe a little bit more conservative than Ubuntu as well. It sort of holds back any drastic design decisions um, in favour of things like stability and user comfortability as well. How comfortable the user is using a user interface because of, of course a user interface isn't going to be at the forefront of everybody's minds all the time. Most people just want something they feel comfortable using and feel that they know where they are to feel that they know how to use their computer. And that to me is what a user interface really should be, uh, at least for the majority of people, and sometimes I think Ubuntu just tries to make it just more exciting, user interfaces more exciting than they need to be. And I like the fact that uh, Linux Mint actually sort of have their feet on the ground on this one. So, uh, I'm not going to be showing you the traditional install process and, and a particularly elaborate view of Linux Mint, because it's 17.1, it's... Even though it's been given its own sort of title as a, as a distribution in its own right, and it really is, the changes that it's made from 17 are, are quite minimal, actually. What I've got here, just up here uh, in Firefox, I've, I've booted up into a virtual machine on the live CD at the moment. Uh, I'm not going to be installing it um, onto the virtual machine to show you the install process because it's pretty identical to the original uh, Linux Mint 17 cinema edition uh, walkthrough. But what I've got here is the new features at a glance. Cinnamon 2.4, which just seems to be a natural progression as to, to uh, as Cinnamon is going. Um, it's got an updated uh, update manager. It's got language. I don't know what the language settings are. Being an English speaker, I guess that's, that's something that I don't have to worry about too often, except when there are differences between US and UK. Uh, different login screen. Uh, system improvements, artwork improvements, other improvements, main components, LTS strategy. So as you can see there, there is nothing really mind-blowing or completely tearing away from the original. And I like that, in a way. Uh, it's not going to be the most exciting release that you're ever going to see. It's going to be a step up from from Linux Mint 17. If you like Linux Mint 17, you probably want to upgrade because it's still based on that same solid foundation of uh, Ubuntu, the long-term support release, but it's probably just been, it's been tweaked and upgraded here and there, and, it's, and it just feels like the natural progression as to how this operating system is going to go over time. There's no real dramatic changes. Um, to be honest, there weren't any major bug fixes that needed to happen as well. As you can see here, the biggest problem looks like it solved freezes with some NVIDIA GeForce GPUs. It's not a problem that I personally had, not even with games or multimedia or any anything that I, that involved pushing the card to its limits. Um, but then again, if some people have had that problem, it's nice to see them tackling it. Um, but again, nothing here seems to indicate that they're addressing any particular big flaws that came out in 17. Um, it's got the system requirements. The system requirements have pretty much been the same for a long time now. Uh, which is good. Again, it's nice to know that you, your computer, if it can support 17, it can support 17.1. Uh, it comes torrented uh, with 32 and 64-bit versions. It's always a good idea, of course, to use the torrents when you can. But fundamentally speaking, um, it is just it's 
Linux Mint 17 uh, just with it a little tighter a little more upgraded now of course because I'm looking at the release candidate I'm not really going to be able to give you too much information on the actual upgrade process itself I will do uh, once the final release has actually been brought out now interesting thing about release candidates the Linux Mint tend to do if you're wondering what a release candidate is it's kind of like a beta candidate except that it's more reliable more stable and more likely to work under mission critical circumstances um, basically this uh, a, a um, release candidate is a an attempt at a final release it's just going to be running through the final stages of testing but if all goes well this should be the exact same release they'll be released out into the uh, for public use. Um, so it's more stable than a beta, but it's still not the final release. Uh, Linux Mint tend to do this because they build on top of Ubuntu quite a lot and because they're already in a very safe environment to work with in terms of stability, um, and especially now with things like um, uh, rev you know using the long-term support release of Ubuntu to, as, a, as, a, uh, as a base, Yes, it does. It, it does seem that the betas aren't really something that's needed, but rather perhaps a release candidate might be more of an accurate description. Okay, so um, that being said, it looks like it's going to be, uh, or looks like it's going to have the exact same software lineup. It's got GIMP, it's got your um, VLC media player, something which people really do like to have bundled. Um, it's got the LibreOffice, when I can find it, LibreOffice there. It's got the same old accessories, but like I say, it's pretty good at guessing what the community actually wants out of it. Um, but yeah, it just seems like the next stable um, release for Linux Mint, and it doesn't seem to have made any drastic decisions, uh, design or under the hood. And, um, and I think that's, again, to its credit. If you're looking for something safe, reliable, steady, that's easy for sort of newcomers or if you're just the kind of person that doesn't really want to get under the hood of the operating system this is probably a good choice for you it's one that i pretty much recommend to all newcomers to linux if they've got the computer that can handle it uh, and of course the computer that can handle it has pretty much half a gig of ram or more so if you've got half a gig of ram then i tend to uh push people towards Linux Mint. It comes with so much bundled software that's useful um, that it, it, it does work very well out of the box. It comes with all the codecs installed. It comes with a great software bundle. It comes with a very user-friendly interface. It's very familiar to people that might be migrating from Windows. Um, it's probably my favorite uh, distribution out there at the moment. I think that it takes all the good work that Ubuntu's done and it, it effectively makes it better it makes it more user friendly it makes it more consistent uh, both stylistically and in terms of upgrades um, and it puts stability very much or very near the top of its list of priorities as well as things like a conservative and user friendly interface and these are things that i think make linux more accessible to uh, to more people uh, so the install process uh, is still uh, the same uh, installing new software into the system is still the same it's as easy as ever um, all in all, i got to give this one a thumbs up. This is a fantastic uh, distribution, and it's carrying on that way. It's not a major upgrade, um, but then again, that in and of itself is a good thing because Linux Mint pretty much nailed it with 17. Uh, they're just sort of sanding down the corners and uh, and all that about now. Um, it's a, Yeah, it's a natural progression. If you're thinking of moving to Linux, this is probably the distribution I would recommend, providing you've got a computer that can support it. Uh, system requirements, of course, are there on the screen. Um, and they're pretty low system requirements, if we're honest. Um, it, they've been the same now for, for at least five years, I think. Um, so yeah, again, a fantastic distribution, same fantastic software bundle, same easy, you know, easy, easy same user-friendly processes for just about everything. Um, Fantastic. Thanks very much for the good work. That's about it for me today. Until next time, I have been Chris Ware and you've been awesome. Take care now.